Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Triplus and today we will be following up on the other videos with regards to RetroPie that I've made in the past. So RetroPie 4.1 is out right now and there were a lot of people with some issues um, that uh, post in the comments. And I tried, tried to solve them there but uh, here is a little updated video um, for those issues as well as some additional tips and tricks that came out with this new RetroPie version. So let's get started. Okay, so a new feature that came out with RetroPie 4.1 is to set up Wi-Fi very easily. So the only thing you need to do is create a TXT file uh, with the code that you see on screen. So your network SSID and your password that you use to log in on your Wi-Fi. Put it in a file. Make sure to have uh, Linux line endings, which is also shown in the video how to do it using Notepad++. And then you just have to put it on the same uh, SD card that actually boots your Raspberry Pi or your RetroPie. So that's all. And then when you go into your um, RetroPie installation, uh, it's very easy to do. So all you need to do there is go to RetroPie and the RetroPie setup menu uh, or, or the Wi-Fi uh, setup menu. Then you choose the bottom option. Um, which is to which will read this file uh, from your uh, from your SD card. We'll try to make the connection. Uh, note here that if you do not have um, Linux line endings, it probably will not work. It will try to put weird characters, and you will have to try again by choosing option two to delete the Wi-Fi connection first. So the disconnect, remove Wi-Fi config, and then retry. So now when you um, once everything works, you can just uh, well, you have internet connection, as you can see here, by uh, showing your IP. And this IP can also be used to SSH into your Pi using uh, Putty, of course. Okay, so the next part is the RetroPie Scraper. So this is actually not a new uh, functionality. It has always been there. But for me, this is a very useful tool to get information about your ROMs. So you just put in the ROMs um, as usual, the way you, you, you're used to. I usually use uh, the Samba Shareway because it's very useful. Um, then you restart your emulation station, um, as you can see here. And once it's done, your system will show up or the, the emulator will show up. Um, your ROM will or should be visible at least. So once it is visible, it's time to install the scraper. Uh, so you go to the uh, RetroPie setup menu. Uh, from here, you can install everything as I showed in my earlier uh, videos. But we are looking for the configuration and tools menu where you are able to download the scraper. So, um, here in configuration tools, you can see scraper on the uh, one but last place. Uh, the installation will take a while. So, it, it took, I think, two, three minutes for me. It will start downloading everything. And then it will start unpacking and installing everything. So once that is done, uh, the setup wizard will ask you to um, to shut down emulation station because it is unable to run emulation station and scrape at the same time because apparently some uh, things might be overwritten, which is not what we want. So just shut down emulation station as we did last time. And then we are able to go to uh, to Putty using SSH. So the next step is fairly straightforward. Once you're logged in into Putty or have a keyboard connected to your Pi, you run the RetroPie setup um, script, which is located in the ret on on your home directory of the Pi user in the RetroPie setup folder. Uh, you have to run it using sudo, uh, else it will not work. So you can see the comments on screen uh, in case you're having trouble with this. Uh, so you go to the same location again as we did earlier. So configuration tools, scraper. So at this point, it will do some final installation topics and start the and start the actual scraping. So here you can do some additional configuration options if you want to scrape all systems, if you want to thumbnails, the size of your images. I just choose scrape all systems. All uh, for me, that's fine. So if you want to do some additional config, no problem. So then it will start scraping, which actually takes a while. Um, 
if you have a lot of systems it will take even longer so once it's finished you try to exit the um, the scraper menu and so on and then you shut down or reboot your Pi and then once you're in your Pi or in your retro Pi again or in an emulation station you're able to see the scraped data that um, the scraper just received and you have more information there on your game and a nice looking thumbnail okay so the next topic is run command Run command is a utility that allows you to make changes to your ROMs or your emulators. So this shows up once you launch a ROM, this little screen, you just press a button and get into the run command um, configuration menu. So from here you can make all the changes. Um, if you want to change those, have a read on the RetroPie wiki, a lot of information is there. But you can change your default uh, emulator that's being used for the, for the system you want. Uh, without any problem. So a lot of people feel like they do not need this run command pop-up every time. So it's also very easy to disable it. Go back into your RetroPie setup menu and from there you can make the required changes. So go to configuration and tools menu and then scroll down until you see run command. On there you can, the launch menu, you should put to disabled. It's also possible to, um, instead of this um, screen, show a splash image. It's configurable from the same menu. But with the changes we just made, you will see that once we launch a ROM, instead of the run command screen that pops up, we immediately go to our ROM. So a lot of people have also been asking me how to remove Kodi from ports after they've used my previous video to install Kodi as its own system. So as you can see here, Kodi is available both in the standard menu as its own system and in ports. So what you do is using SSH or your keyboard is to go to the RetroPie ROMs folder uh, using the, the comments you can see on screen. Um, and then in the ports ROM folder, there should be a Kodi.sh. So if you want to keep this file, back it up, but you can just remove it if you don't want Kodi in ports anymore. So type rm uh, sh and make sure the folder is empty. So once that's done, go to your um, emulation station again, restart emulation station, and you should see that the ports folder is, or the ports uh, entry from your emulation station is now gone. Kodi system is still available and usable as always. Okay, so the final topic of today will be the emulation station themes or skins. Um, themes are basically the way your RetroPie displays all your different emulators and so on. So once again, go into your RetroPie setup menu, where you will also choose configuration tools. And from there you can choose ES themes, so emulation station themes. From here you can choose between a wide array of different themes that are already provided for emulation station. Um, if you want to see what they look like already, they are all on the wiki. So there's a whole list with all these themes um, with some screenshots. Note that not all themes support all systems. So it is possible that, for example, if you made Kodi its own system, that there won't be a logo or a background um, available. You can make this yourself, but that's a completely different topic. So once you've installed the topic, go back to your emulation station by exiting all the the configuration menus. Restart your system because it has to load the skin that you just downloaded or at least that's to pick it up and then get into your start menu again go to UI settings scroll completely to the bottom and there you will see team set. So there you can choose between all the teams you downloaded from the RetroPie setup menu then click on back and after a while it will load the team you selected. So this may take a while um, Sometimes it may take longer than other times, depending on how uh, big the team is. But as you can see, the team you just selected is available. So choose a team that you like. Um, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of available teams. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope all the topics covered here were very interesting to you and useful. In case you have any additional questions, please post it in the comments and I will to try to make a 
other follow-up video with those questions. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys again in the next one. Bye!